to do. I'm going to say no more. Cheers, Richie. Over to you. Tell us all about um, your story. Well, so thank you for your words and uh, hello, everybody. Cheers. Salute to any of you, everybody. Well, actually, right now, as as uh, as they said, so I'm during my holidays. Well, harvest is going to start very soon, actually, because, uh, you know, we're having, as you might know, a very hot summer. Uh, we might start probably end of next week with wow. the earliest, with the Moscatel, okay? So, which is normally is very early, but it's some years we can start or either, mm, you know, normally second part of August, sometimes even end of August, but this time, you know, it's gonna be earlier and well, it's uh, what happened with the vineyard. So I took the opportunity to do another of my passion, which is sailing. So yes, I'm doing this from, from, from a boat from a friend and uh, well, so cheers for everyone. And very happy to share to share with you a little bit of our history. So I will ask uh, our Wine Society friends to put the video, if uh, that is all right, the first video. <clears throat> oh, sorry, there's been a bit of a delay, so I'm just going to change laptops. I'll be one moment. No problem. Oh, so sorry, I'm not seeing You know, let, let's, we can do something if you want. I can go straight away to the presentation. Then if you find a way to do the video at the end, it can be fine. Too. Yeah, my apologies, Richie. It was working perfectly a moment ago. So I'll get it sorted and uh, we'll get back to you. Okay, so I will go straight away. No problem. Okay, so there we go. And well, so tonight, as uh, Pierre mentioned before, I'm going to explain about two different projects. All of them are inside my family business. Uh, so just for you to have an idea, my family, it's uh, originally from Rioja. We've been farmers for we don't know how many generations in a particular area of Rioja, which is uh, Badaran in Rioja Alta. Uh, but here we're going to talk about two projects that they started um, in the in the last uh, generation. So my father was the one to to start. In particular, my father was the one to start uh, Hacienda Lopedaro, and then my generation is the one that we have started Viñedos del Pacto. So Viñedos del Pacto, Viñedos del Pacto. It's a uh, you know Rioja. He was mentioning very well. Pierre has a long legacy, and we have to respect that. We have to. To a little bit to pay tribute to where we come from and Viñedos del Pacto what uh, we want with this is to recover the old style that Rioja has been making wine for the last centuries so let's say that the classical style started uh, in mid 19th century but even before that we've always had a style of vinification and this style has been always related with los pueblos with the villages so normally if you were traveling to Rioja 70 years ago or 170 years ago, you were able to go to the village of my family and to taste wine, not from one single family, but from 300 families that all of them have very little wineries making uh, wines from very few uh, plots. And what we will with Del Pacto is to go back to this type of wines, making wine from a, a single area or a single vineyard and to go back to the type of farming that we were having long time before. Think that Rioja had a change during the 70s. Uh, Spain became open. We started to export more to other countries. And in Rioja was the time that we needed quantity. We needed to grow and Rioja as a population grew a lot. But before those times, vineyards and farming was a very minimal production. Uh, the yield was not important. It was, everything was organic. Okay, so everything that what we are doing with Viñedos del Pacto is to look back to this past to vinificate only vineyards that are older than the 70s, so 70s and older, okay, low yields, organic farming, a lot of diversity in terms of, um, of the bioli biology of the vineyards. So think that, you know, uh, after the 70s, we started to plant clones, okay, so it means one single vine 
then you clone it and then you plant you know five hectares of the same okay so this before that time our grandfathers they were they were taking one vine from here one vine from there so all these vineyards is also recovering that style that by the way now not only us but other wineries in rioja we are starting to plant again as they were planting before mixing different uh, uh, different genetics and also mixing grape varietals so this is something that now is happening again so this uh, project is paying a tribute to a long history behind of uh, how these vinos de pueblo vinos from single villages and single parcels were before okay in a region like Dio Rioja, so you probably know Dio Rioja is in the north of Spain, okay? So we have these three different regions, Rioja Alta, Alavesa, and Oriental. So uh, the, the wine that we're going to taste today has a mixture of Rioja Alta and Alavesa. But the most important thing is that it comes from this particular region that you see now in the, in the map. You have something that goes from the left. I don't know if you can see my point, but it goes from the left to the right. It, this is the river Ebro, okay? So everything that is in the north side of the river, uh, uh, Ebro River is what we call Son Sierra, okay? So in this north part, we have a mountain, which is Sierra Cantabria, okay? So these are the higher elevation uh, soils that are right south of this mountain. So Rioja has mountains in the north and mountains in the south. So the, the areas of Son Sierra is this calcareous clay that you see this yellow, uh, soils okay so the, the type of soil is is this is clay limestone soils okay and uh, this is one of the most i mean it's a, it's one of the most well known or probably the, the best well known regions it's where now all the you know wineries from outside that now they're coming to rioja like vega sicilia or all the prestigious producers from Ribera del Duero that are coming are or for example the rosail family from from france are all being uh, settled in this region and what we want with this wine that we will taste later, El Pacto de la Sonsierra, is to reflect this particular soil, calcareous clay, these mountains that you can see on, on the picture, which is the Sierra Cantabria, okay, and a long tradition uh, of, of uh, farming over there, okay. So, as I was mentioning, of the, the biodiversity before, okay, so and the traditional viticulture. So, that's a little bit of summary. This is how. It looks, for example, one of our singular vineyards. This is Riojanda. Okay, this is one of the top wines that we have on the range that it's available in the, the wine society. Maybe not yet, but uh, it will if, if I'm not wrong. And, uh, and so the idea with this collection is to reflect the terroir, to reflect this old style of farming that was forgotten, okay, and that we want to bring it back making wines from one single region or from one single parcel. So here we have the red, the white that is coming from a different region, that is actually the region where my family is coming from, and the two on the right, which are the two Viñedo Singular, which is a singular vineyard, okay? But we will not talk today about these particular wines, but we will taste El Pacto de la Sonsierra, okay? So that is the, that is the explanation about El Pacto. So I don't know if we have the chance to resolve the technical problem and we can show the video. We think so. Mahesh is going to do it for me. Good old Mahesh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so sense. much. <laughs> He's stolen my permission. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, so well, this is a summary, as you saw. So I really recommend you and welcome to visit Rioja whenever you come and to visit with us some of these vineyards, because this is really our treasure that we have to keep it. So just 
to have an idea. If projects like Viñedos del Pacto are not born, all vineyards of Rioja will have no future. So you, you, I mean, you have to think that these vineyards are super expensive to keep it. So it's not possible to keep these vineyards for making, you know, that Rioja is a very, we have, we had a saying in Rioja that Rioja is the region of the 1001 wines, okay? So in Rioja, we have a lot of things together, but if wines are being reserved on an inexpensive price, that is complicated to, to be able to, to keep and maintain vineyards like this. So this is Viñedos del Pacto. And now we're gonna move on to Hacienda Lope de Aro. That Hacienda Lope de Aro is uh, going to the classical style. And this is important to, 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 to highlight the difference. So the historical way is what we've been doing for centuries. Okay, so this has been the, you know, the, the, the common way of doing wine from my grand, grand, grandfathers. But the classical style is what Rioja made Rioja famous. So think that uh, Rioja, thanks to the influence of France, we have to say that, to Bordeaux, okay? Uh, during some times, we started to make these vinos finos, fine wines, okay? A new way of doing wine, using the aging on the barrels, making a, a style that was more suitable for the markets, international markets, such as the UK, uh, Latin America, North America. So this was the big change that made Rioja to be what is today. So if you are uh, happy, Ana, uh, to show the video of Hacienda Lope de Aro before my presentation. Good. Okay, thank you very much, fantastic. So, well, let's start with my presentation on Lope de Aro. Okay. Now you can sit. Good. Yeah. Okay, so as I was mentioning, now uh, I like to show this picture. Okay, this is a picture that we have in the winery. Okay, so if anytime you come and visit us, you will see that explains a little bit our history of uh, wine in Rioja. Okay, it starts with even before the Roman times is uh, has been uh, proved that wine was in Spain before the Romans arrived. Okay, so actually, not that just wine was there is that one wine was important in the lives of of the people from Rioja even before. But let's go to the most important uh, part of the history is that in the old times they were doing wine. Uh, it was, you know, it was part of our lives, the consumption of wine was very important for La alimentación, so for the food of, of so the energy that people needed to work in the fields and everything. But the history of Rioja changed. Look here that you can see that there is a part in the left that there is like a 0 050. This is the commerce that Rioja had with the Basque country, okay, before the vinos finos, the fine wines start to arrive. Okay, but what happens is that Philoxera arrives to France. Okay, so there was some entrepreneurial families that they were starting to uh, make a new way of doing wine, like 
it was in Bordeaux, aging the wine, selecting better the grapes, uh, having a, a little bit less fuller body, but more refined, okay? When Philoxera arrived to France, you think that France got out of, run out of wine during decades, okay? So some uh, entrepreneur families from Rioja, from the Basque Country and from France came to Rioja because in Rioja, so Philoxera arrived to France uh, 1860s and didn't arrive to Rioja until 1899. So we had around three decades, okay? of booming of the Rioja wine industry. So here you can see, you know, there is a, a Rioja farmer making a shake hands with a French businessman, okay? Well, it's an example. Then the machinery arrives to Rioja. So we start to have the first tractors. A railway was key. Railway was what we were using for transporting the wine to the ports and shipping out to the UK to Latin America to all those markets. Okay, women arrive to to the to the labor. They start to work mostly inside the wineries. Uh, first laboratories, aging in the barrels, and of course, what you can see is the fiesta. Okay, so it's a, it was, you know, party. It was a very uh, very rich times for Rioja. Just for you to have an idea, now in the Rioja because Rioja has three three communities, so it's Rioja, Basque Country, and Navarra, but just in Rioja, right now we have around 40,000 40, hectares. So in 1880, Rioja was 52,000, so it was even bigger than it is today. And think that before, most of the vineyards, they were treated uh, just by, by hand, so there was no machinery, okay? So imagine the impact, economic impact that had the boom and after the crash. Actually, I have uh, relatives living, uh, uh, living, sorry, in Argentina, in Chile. So that happened in Rioja. Okay, so that was the beginning. But that after that, when we recovered from Philoxera, that was the beginning of what we know today. That is Rioja. Rioja Pelicion was created. Is going to become 100 years old soon. So it's younger than the Wine Society. Okay, Wine Society is older than Rioja. Okay, so probably on that time they were already buying from uh, from wineries over Rioja. And well, so. Lope de Aro, the, the vineyards are mostly uh, based in Sonsierra and Rioja La Besa, so these areas that you see over here, Alto Najerilla, and a little bit on Rioja Baja. So uh, for you to have an idea, even so while Pacto, we're talking about one particular region, one particular vineyard, uh, the classical style of Rioja has been always blending, okay? And we have to, proud, to be proud of that too. So it's just a different philosophy of vinification. So Hacienda Lope de Aro, philosophy is contemporary classic concept. So we, we want to make these fine wines, but with, a, a, well, Pierre was explaining probably better than I do that uh, what we want. So we, I always say that we are just one piece of a chain, okay? That we are inheriting what Rioja brand is and we have to leave this brand to the next generation better than we found. So what we are trying is to keep that history and to put uh, this modernity that we want to show. So. So this modernity is instead of doing this classical oak dominated style. So we want the fruit, the terroir to be, to be uh, outstanding. Okay. And now when we taste the wine, we will feel it. So we're talking about the vineyards. Uh, well, this is our winery that whenever you want to come and visit us, uh, it's uh, well, here is 7,000 barrels. It says in the presentation right now it's close to 10,000 barrels. So uh, thanks to th that the wines are being loved uh, in the whole world we are growing. And this is our full range, Hacienda Lope de Aro. So we have Viñedo del Pacto with one philosophy and Hacienda Lope de Aro with other philosophy. And I have to, I like to finish with this uh, phrase, okay? So the first written words in Spanish language are in La Rioja, in the monastery of Yuso in uh, San Millán de la Cogolla, okay? So the first poet in Spain, was Gonzalo de Berceo, the first written Spanish poet. Uh, in his first poem, he finished the poem saying, it'll be worth, I think, a glass of good wine, which, uh, well, of course, is in Spanish, but this is the translation. So this just for you to see the importance of the, of the wine in our lives, okay? So, well, uh, now let's go to the practical side, which is uh, tasting the wines. 
Richie, can I just ask? I thought that was some amazing photos in there. We saw we saw a couple of pictures of snow. How common or how often do you get snow in the winter in Rioja? Well, it's uh, every year. We well, just for you to have an idea up here, we have a, a ski resort in Rioja in the mountain. One mountain that is two thousand two hundred. We have a ski resort, and myself, I'm a ski lover. Okay, and I do a uh, randonne, so uh, mountain ski, so going up. So I we have the chance many times during the winter. When I mean many times, maybe I go 20, 25, 30 days during the winter that after work. So if I can at 3 p.m., I take my car, I drive one hour, and then I can climb up the mountain and I ski down. So this is always in the vineyards, uh, which is, of course, is much lower in the vineyards. We might have, you know, from a dry year that we might have maybe four or five days of snow. Yeah. It can be to a wetter year that can be maybe 10, maybe double. But we have always, every year, at least a little, a tiny of it, we have always snow. Maybe, I mean, as soon as you go lower and lower, for, for example, in Logroño, we have not every year snow, but, uh, you know, normally we have two, three days of snow. And the snow is, it, I guess, really important because it can be quite dry in Rioja. So it, mm -hmm. uh, in the winter, it can bring the, the water table yeah. up within the soil, which helps the, the, the vines grow healthily through the warmer, drier um, Absolutely. seasons. Absolutely. So, uh, well, now, for example, in Rioja, now we're having this hot summer and dry summer. But the good thing is that we had a very snowy and rainy winter this year. So uh, good soils have reserved. So for example, these vineyards that we were seeing, normally they have limestone uh, below. So the, the vines, the, the, the uh, roots can go very deep. So below these rocks, they normally have humidity. And even in the summertime, the good terroir, not all the terroir, but the good terroir have a reserve and uh, they can, they, for example, this year, uh, you know, the, the good vineyards, they are still green, nice. Well, all, all the vineyards are green, but now we're having some uh, stress in, in some vineyards, but in the good ones, they have good balance, which is the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Thank you, thanks. whatever so, you, what you want to do, let's go with the wines. Let's taste, yes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, the Wine Society Blanco, white wine. Okay, this, uh, I, we have to say, Pierre, that, uh, you know, our history of white wine. So Rioja has been shy about their white wines, you know, during the last 30 years. So uh, during the 90s, uh, Rioja, so before the 90s, I think in the 80s was the when it started to fall a lot. So we had around a 30 percent, 30 something percent of white, uh, white grape vineyards, and it fell down to around five percent in the in the 2000s. Okay, it was forbidden to plant white uh, vineyards for more than a decade. But my father has oh, been God. always a lover of white wines. He always has believed in the potential, and uh, the truth is that I always say that. The most sophisticated market in the world is the UK. I always say it, and I say it not only to to people to you, but I say it to Americans and to others. So, and uh, it's it's a market that really appreciates quality, and where this style of wine, uh, the the white Rioja, you know, it's it works very well. So, what we want with this wine, uh, well, this is something that uh, Pierre knows the history exactly the same as well as me, because because we live together. So this is the wine that we have designed together, okay? So uh, when Pierre came, he uh, tasted our Lope de Aro Blanco, which is a fantastic wine, but it's a wine that has a much less aging on the uh, aging, okay? And it's a little bit more fresher, more simple, okay? And he thought like, okay, why don't we work? So this, this wine is uh, mainly Viura. Viura is a natural grape, is the, is the most important grape in Rioja, think that uh, today Rioja is planting more white wines, but uh, but most of the of the vineyards that we have, or we have with our farmers that we work with some little small farmers, uh, they are 
small pieces of land, but of all vineyard. Okay, so normally they are they were like uh, maybe they have three hectares of tempranillo, and then they have half a hectare or less of white wine. So these very small parcels, okay, that you know we started to buy from them, and uh, so we started to make this wine with Bure and Malvasia, which are the, the two main grapes. And the the change that we did with uh, Pierre was to say, okay, why don't we make this a little bit more serious? Okay, we age the wine longer. Okay, we play with the lees. So we try to get more volume, more oily style, okay, and to get more a uh, much richer style. So this is what I think it's a uh, is the definition of this society white, which is uh, you know I think that in the in the nose we have a this fresh style, but that you can feel the the game with the lees so with this a little bit of boulangerie. Exactly, yeah, and it's I think what what makes it such an interesting wine is that. It's not, um, it's got freshness, but it, it's not, you wouldn't describe it as a fruity wine, which for me, white Rioja is not fruity. It has this, this slightly nutty character. Um, and, uh, and actually, if you line up, this is, this is for me what, Rio, you know, it's, it's, it's individuality. Um, mm -hmm that can't be copied anywhere else. And yeah. um, it was such a shame. I, when I started buying Spain, which was about, gosh, I think I started buying Spain about 14 or 15 years ago. And I, I was both impressed and surprised with the whites because at the time the whites that were being made or a lot of the whites, they were much fresher, they were cleaner, but they were really boring. They, yeah. they could have taste they could have come from anywhere in the world mm -hmm. um, and um, and and I just couldn't justify buying them for wine society members in the last in the last few sort of five or six years um, um, there has been almost a transformation to go back to history um, mm -hmm. and make these wines with with individuality and um, you know, I, I, the other thing that's lovely about this, the alcohol's not too high. I think it's, mm -hmm. I think it's 13, 12 and a half percent, you know, so mm -hmm. it's a wine that you can, you can enjoy a few glasses. You don't, you know, you don't need to, you, you know, it's not, it's not a sort of blockbuster style. Um, and um, yeah, it's um, very versatile too. Very pleased with it. And um, yeah, to add in some information about the history that you were mentioning, I mean, so, so during the during the end of the 20th century, uh, you know, I I always explain Pierre that I've been raised in a country that we were watching in TV like Italian design, German technology. So everything from outside looked better than our own, and, and this had a huge impact in the Spanish wine industry. Yeah. So during the 90s. Uh, you know, other regions, they just became crazy, started to plan Cabernet, Merlot, blah, 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 blah. Rioja didn't, which was, you know, they were brave to say, no, we, we're, we, we will keep our roots. But in terms of the whites, they just, you know, they abandoned. Exactly. They, they did. And when they started to make wine, Rioja as a region, you know, actually in the 2007, you might remember that Rioja uh, was the time that they, uh, they allowed again to plant. And they approved three foreign grape varietals. So Verdejo, Sauvignon Blanc, and Chardonnay, which for me was crazy idea. Okay. Crazy. But the good thing is that now Rioja, we are creating our own style. Okay. Yeah. We are recovering, not creating, because this yeah. is not new. So this yeah, is yeah, yeah, exactly. has always been there. Okay. But now we are being brave to say, okay, we don't want fruity and simple and fresh style of wines that we want to create our own character. And I think that this style, it's uh, it's well, it's Actually, if you see the figures of Rioja, what the the, the category which is growing the the biggest is the white wines Excellent. because they they are now also the Spanish gastronomy is accepting this style of wine. So, Spanish consumers they were used to say ah white wines is just uh, for refreshing, and now we are started to gain so to play with the uh, you know with the uh, food pairings to to be, and this is why they are also working wines like Godellos aged Godellos or uh, you know other regions like Ribeiro 
or well everywhere i think rivera del duero now that we are we are doing whites in rivera del duero so so it's a it's a now it's a starting to be this more uh, neutral uh, like this wine neutral uh, more versatile more a serious style of of white wine yeah but, uh, well i'm very happy that we did this project together and that is being so successful for, yeah. for the wine society so what should we do next go to el pacto we go from white to red yeah to white which go, might like, might seem unusual for many many of our um our members but actually um i think it's a really sh wise way to taste these styles of wines, particularly the last wine, which is um, which which I won't say any more about, but actually it's a, a, a best to leave till the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I I like to make it this way because uh, you know we're we're gonna leave the the older wine, the more complex wine. Even it's a white, I know it's weird to to go from white to red and then back to white, but I think it's uh, it's gonna be fun. So well, now we are. We are tasting El Pacto vintage. Uh, well, the the one I'm tasting is 2019. Yeah, okay. that's that's the one we have at the okay. moment. 19, yeah. 2019, and uh, well, so uh, here we have uh, this wine. It's a mixture of 27 small parcels, okay, of uh, four different villages in the Son Sierra region, okay, uh, most. Of them, it's coming from San Vicente de la Sonsierra and Baños de Ebro, which are neighbor uh, neighbor um, villages. All this, uh, so the youngest is from early 70s. The oldest is around 100 years old. Okay, so they are old, uh, all, uh, all of them are very old vineyards, mostly Tempranillo. So Sonsierra has been always um, dominated by Tempranillo, but the Tempranillo of these vineyards have nothing to do with the Tempranillo that has been being planted during the last 20 years. That's important to say. So think that when Rioja starts to use nurseries for planting uh, and they needed kilos, they needed production. So they started to choose, if you have to clone a single vine, which one are you gonna get? So you are gonna get the one which is the strongest that produce the biggest quantity. But this is not the dominant clones that they were used before. So these uh, vineyards normally average production while in Rioja you have around 6.5, well, around no, the maximum production allowed is 6.5 tons. So 6,500 6, kilograms. Uh, these, uh, these vineyards are normally in around 5,000 kilograms per, per hectare. Okay, so the, the, the yield is much lower. Then this is fully organic farming and is certified. Okay, so uh, we work on, uh, you know, certifying all the vineyards because sometimes farmers, they do it organically, but they don't certify it. And so in this case, we have, uh, we have got to make them to, to, to certify the vineyards. And here, what we pretend is to, uh, actually, before I was having a conversation with my father, I'm very fun, I want to mention this because, you know, he's, he loves classical style of wine. So, and he said, you know, why don't we age longer this wine? And, and, you know, I was talking to them. That's not the point of this wine. So here, what we want is to represent terroir. So we want to have the pure character of Son Sierra. If we, we age it too long, then it's okay, but you will get much more flavors, much more dominant of the barrel. And here, what we want is to feel this uh, calcareous clay, this uh, tempranillo, which is in this area, is a little bit, it's, it's a combination of maturity because these uh, are normally Southern exposure vineyards, okay? But at the same time, uh, picked in the right time and with uh, equilibrium, with balance, okay? So this is what we look. We, we look the wine to reflect where it's coming from these old vineyards, carefully um, um, worked, so the, the viticulture, okay? And to reflect what is the philosophy and the style of wine from La Sonsierra. It's so a lot of fruit. Incredibly expressive, as, as you said, very fruity, lovely kind of dark mm -hmm. fruit and spice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can taste that the the health of the of the um, of the grapes and the vines are just 
-hmm. you know in, it's incredible just wonderful purity here for me what is amazing Pierre is the maturity so these dark fruits this maturity and at the same time the perfect balance so it's a because sometimes full-bodied wines can be tiring because they if they lack of acidity if they lack of freshness okay you enjoy a glass but this wine fools your mouth fills your mouth but at the same time you want to drink more so actually i would say well actually this is in the in the boat is one of the wines i have so it's it's a perfect <laughs> summer so even it's a wine that you know for me i think is super versatile and you can have it with you know red meat or whatever but if you chill it a little bit you can enjoy in the summertime for me i think it has this enough acidity to to be able to to enjoy in a in a hot day in a in a sunny day and richie say can you tell us something about the the the, yeah. the label the mm -hmm. name um yeah. correct so el pacto is the pact with our ancestors so we want to thank them the work they did and we want to bring a little bit back the style of wine that they used to do before of course like everywhere like like everything that we're talking it's always a mixture between tradition and modernity so they had not the 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 the, the ways to make this pure refined style of wine okay so actually before it was more common to do a carbonic maceration and other styles but we want the viticulture of before to be elaborated with the nowadays techniques okay which is basically here is a wild yeast so we don't use i mean we are a very hippie winery so if you come in december you will see last year i think the last uh, barrel uh, of uh, of actually of one of the singular vineyards of this wine that to finish the fermentation was late december at the end of december so we, we just leave the the the, 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 the yeast to work on their on their way little by little, poco a poco, to, to make the wine. So this is this is what we want. It's the pact with our ancestors. And this is why we are showing these shake hands of different generations. So this is a little bit the, what we want to represent with this uh, label and this wine. And um, Richie, it wasn't part of the tasting this evening, but we have just started um, on our website, started offering for the first time um, the El Pacto Blanco um which actually i think it's the first time you've made the the, uh, the first yeah you are shipping the first vintage which yeah. is 2020 yes and well actually i'm the wine which i'm more proud this year okay el pacto blanco so pacto blanco it's different region it's a more special for us because it's coming from our mother region so from alto najerilla okay completely different beer so red soils so it's a ferrous clay it's much more fresher so my father Pierre uh, he 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 doesn't didn't want us to pick red grapes from Alto Nigeria from his own region because he remembered 60s 70s very cold vintages harvesting in November grapes of nine degrees oh my okay? gosh but this has changed and now really I think that Alto Nigeria has one of the biggest potential for white wines in all Spain, because even some regions of Galicia like Valdeorras, Ribeiro, now they're becoming super popular. They, I mean, Orense, the regions where these, these, uh, these uh, areas are, are hotter than Alto Nigeria. So this particular uh, small region in Rioja, it's super, super uh, cool, okay? So it has cool temperatures, uh, actually, before I just passed very quickly on the presentation, but there is a map of, of temperatures and this particular area, well, it was called the Somontano of, of Rioja. So Somontano means uh, it, it, like almost the mountain. So before the mountain. OK, so it's high elevation. So this El Pacto, we're talking about vineyards that are. 480 to 540. OK, but Alto, the Pacto Blanco, we are talking about vineyards that are over 650. Wow. So quite high, yeah. quite high elevation. Okay, so eight different parcels, uh, same philosophy, old vineyards, all of them, and you know it has a game in the in the palate that I think, you know, I I think these wines will you know will become. So now they are not as well known as they will be in the future, and I think that yeah, actually that right exactly that is the one. So 
So there we can see Alto Najerilla, you see, is, is right in the, cool, in the coolest part of Rioja. So, I mean, the blue one, we are talking about areas that we have snow during the whole winter. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's really, really, really the limit, really the limit, okay, of, of uh, farming. So for these particular whites, so we have reds too from there, but they are uh, actually the, the reds like the Valdechuecas, the, the Viñedo Singular, there are reds that when you taste them, you don't even, you, you don't really know where to think these reds are. So, so you will not relate them to the style, typical style of Rioja. So it's something very, so they have a, a little bit more greenness, but in a nice way. So a verticality, uh, you know, this super nice acidity, uh, you know, the reds have, so the, the white wines, we have acidities closer to champagne. So really high acidity. But as we get, we play there, all vineyards, we play with the, with the, um, um, with, with the uh, lease, okay? And we work also with the aging. So you have a boom, it's a, you know, in this same style, but much topper yeah. quality and of course, higher price. Okay, let's move on to um, this quite special wine with also with a brilliant label to. Thank you to let me open this and enjoy after we finish the tasting. My, <laughs> my friends, family and friends are very happy to enjoy the glass of wine tonight. <laughs> okay, so, well, here we are going back to, to our past. So, so this, this wine, uh, Pierre, uh, this wine, it's uh, going back to so the Classica collection, okay? Actually, this is something very, very unusual that we are not as we are not a centenary winery, so we are much younger than that. But uh, in the at the, in the end of the so when I joined the company, okay, when I started uh, to manage the company, so we had a swift of uh, generations because my father that he became eighty and he's okay, but he was ill for for some years. So then we changed generation and we didn't have this this uh, top. Uh, this top category in Lope de Aro, and I said, like, okay, if our philosophy is a classical contemporary winery, if we want to do a top, top, top wine, we need to go back to what this classical style has always had the top wines, which are grande reservas. So wines with longer aging. So this style of wines is the, the style that probably not every region, very few regions can, can make. So wines that have the possibility to age for lots of years. So Classica, what we want is to, to pay homage to this style of wine that made Rioja famous uh, internationally, that you know, conquered the, you know, the, the, the customers, or they, they made to love the wines from people from London, from New York, and from Panama, okay? So this particular one is a, is a style that has been forgotten in Rioja. If white wines were forgotten, Forget about this style. So there are only few, very few wineries that still do this, this style. This is, a, a, this is a mixture of vineyards from Alto Najerilla and Son Sierra, okay? All of them super old vineyards. So we're talking about 50 years old and, and above, most of them. Uh, aged for minimum three years in the barrel, okay? And the rest is uh, aging in the bottle. So think this is a 2012. So it means that has been in the bottle also for another five years or something like that, okay? And we released this year last this wine last year. So I mean, we do. I mean, business wise, it's a stupid decision. Okay, <laughs> don't do it. We never do it. Okay, it's much better to do what Bordeaux does. So you pay en premier, and then you receive in a couple of years, and then you wait in your cellar and you drink ten years later. Okay, so this is we keep it for you, and then we sell it much cheaper than Bordeaux does, okay? But anyway, we're very happy. So, and then the label, as this is a, a collection that we want to pay homage to the, you know, our, the history of Rioja. So what we are doing is that every single vintage, every single wine, we are paying tribute to one person that has been important in the history of Rioja. So this particular one, this was the first photographer. He was called Jean Laurent. He was originally from uh, Burgundy. He was uh, appointed by uh, Isabel II, okay, to uh, make photographs of the just uh, uh, inaugurated railway that uh, went from Tudela 
to Bilbao. So that was the railway that was used to export wine in, uh, in, internationally from Rioja. So he was the first guy to do pictures of uh, wineries, vineyards, uh, um, prestigious people from the time. Actually, his collection of photographs are shown uh, permanently in a museum in Madrid. And uh, well, we thought that it was a nice way to to uh, start with this uh, this uh, white. And you know, as we are not a, um, so we we have this game always of modern and classic. So you have this style of picture which reminds a little bit the this um, uh, this style of wine of Toulouse, Lautrec, and this all this imaginary of the Belle Epoque, okay, in France and in Rioja. But we have this. A game that we put. He's making a selfie. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. Excellent. I didn't notice that. So, excellent. You know, it's like a <laughs> niño. Okay. So we have this game. And well, so talking about the wine. So here you find maturity. Well, I think this is. You can just enjoy smelling yeah. the wine and looking for more and more. It's uh, a wine that um, one of those wines you can just you 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 almost. You, you can't help but drink it, but you don't want to drink it too fast because the aroma and the bouquet is so special and it's changing and it's complex and it smells, I mean, it's smoky, it's buttery, it's... It's nutty, as you were saying. It's nutty, there is um, so flowers, much going on. You have flowers yeah. here. Again, you have the Volangerie. It's wonderful wine. Yeah. Violets. Yeah, it's uh, this is uh, well, this I think, and this is why I wanted to end with this wine because um, I think this is not a just another white, uh, fresh, simple, but rather it's like it's a grand reserva. So it's a it's a wine, and the good thing is that if you forget about this wine in the cellar, it will always it will only do well if you drink it five years later. Okay. The only problem, if you do that, is that someone drinks for you. This is the only risk, because if you leave the cellar, maybe your son or someone else will drink. So yeah. maybe you have to take this now and drink it since wine. <laughs> so. Oh, cheers. Thank you, Richie. Um, that was fantastic to go through those wines. Um, okay. And um, I think um, Anna, Anna has been fielding various questions okay. um, that have been coming through, Anna. I certainly have. And I have to say thank you so much, both of you, for a, for a lovely presentation and tasting. Um, Richie, you've done the expert job of answering lots of questions we've had come in already. <laughs> um, but what I would like to do is clear up a couple of points. There was still a little bit of confusion, I think, on the altitude of, um, yeah. of your vineyard. So if you wouldn't mind just explaining again the range of altitudes okay. um, and then I'll move on to the next question, if that's all right. OK, well, I mean, in, inside Rioja, you have so we have from uh, the I mean like all our wines we have from 350 in Rioja Baja up to our highest one is close to 900 but it's for a different project okay it's for a sparking wine project that it will come in the future okay but in this particular wines that we were tasting uh, El Pacto so Viña uh, so white society Sierra, a little bit of Alto Najeria and a little bit from other areas. So we, we have a mixture of, uh, of more altitudes. Okay. Most of them will be 500 and up. Okay. Most of them. El Pacto, in this in La Son Sierra, we are talking about this El Pacto Tinto. Okay. Because maybe the confusion is because we talk, I talked also about El Pacto Blanco. El Pacto Tinto, the, the lowest will be about 500. Okay, or 490, and the highest will not arrive to 600. So will be probably 580, something like that. Okay, 590. And this one, this uh, Clásica, it has a mixture of uh, Son Sierra, which is the altitude that I was mentioning. Maybe maybe you have a few plots that are higher than 600. But Alto Najerilla, we're talking that the minimum we have is 600 and up. So mostly are from 700 up, so most of them will be from 750 up to close to 800. 
Wonderful. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> um, we've had two questions around uh, around this particular range, the Grand Reserva. I think first, um, Pierre, I might hand over to you because we've had two people, Chris and also Damien, ask about the Classica Grand Reserva Rosado 2009, which um, has recently won a Decanter Platinum platinum pardon me medal and it says i believe in decanter magazine that it's stocked by the wine society so pierre please can you confirm <laughs> yes yes so um it yes it is stocked by the wine society but we haven't yet offered it um, um, um uh, this was a wine that i was fortunate enough to taste for the first time when i visited you guys I think it was in February or even January this year and I thought it was amazing and we bought some um, and um, actually because of the supply chain um, issues it's taken a bit longer for it to come in into our stock um, it's since won a decanter award which is always fantastic um, and an endorsement and it will be available to members um, in September um, so uh, in about four weeks in our 1874 magazine, there's a feature on Spain and the Rosado Grand Reserva uh, is in that. Um, it is quite an extraordinary wine, 2009 vintage, um, you know, for a rosé, that's extraordinary. And it's quite it's quite special. So uh, watch out. It will go live um, yeah, in September. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, if we were saying that this style of wine, this Gran Reserva Blanco, it's uh, there are very, very few wineries to do it. The Rosado Gran Reserva is absolutely a unicorn. Yeah. So, you know, I think actually that we are two wineries doing that. So, yeah. So it's a uh, very, very few, very, very few. And actually, volumes are very small, too. So we we produce less than 2000 bottles. It was to be honest, it was a just an experiment that we when we tasted we said like wow you know so we loved it and uh, and this is why volumes are very small and uh, but you know for the ones who can handle a bottle they they absolutely will love it and um yeah there was a question that just popped up about comparisons with another very famous rosé from rioca and uh chris i think it was yes it's um that stylistically, yeah, that the similarities are are there in that this is a an oxidatively made uh, rosado, um, which isn't an easy thing to do because um, most rosé will rather than be uh, oxidatively, it will oxidize. Um, but um, this is in many ways, Richie, the the rosado is like a it's it's sort of halfway to being a red wine, even though it's a pink wine, isn't it? It's got it's got Absolutely. substance and structure behind it, um, and um, yeah, is is very unique and um, quite an exhilarating style of wine. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So, so there are, there are similarities. You know, I think the what you should do is to try together. I've done it, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know. I think this is the great thing of wine. So it's diversity, different styles. And, uh, but, you know, the good thing is that more and more people actually now wineries. So the good thing is that in 10 years time, much. So there are more wineries that are doing this style now that will come to the market later. And that is fantastic that it may be in 10 years time. There are 20 wineries in Rioja doing classical Rosado. That would be fantastic. Yeah, lovely. Thank you both very much. And I think we've got time for one more question. Not only have someone asked it, somebody else has asked, please, can we get an answer? And I think it should be an interesting question, actually. So we've been uh, asked, uh, two members now would like to hear uh, about the difference between Viura versus Tempranillo Blanco and the different style of um, white Rioja that those two great varieties produce. Mm -hmm. Well, Viura, uh, so actually they have a similarity that they are, Consider neutral grapes. So Tempranillo Blanco is a slightly more arom aromatic than Viura, that, but they are they are quite uh, similar in style. So now we are planting more. Of course, we need to know more about the wine because about the, this grape varietal too, because I mean, junk Viuras, so uh, vineyards of uh, of uh, Viura that are junk, they don't show the 
the, the, the greatness that have these old vineyards. So this is why Tempranillo Blanco, we've been planting it for not 20 years. So, so we are still learning and learning about the, how they, they evolve. But if I have to, create, to, to talk about the difference, will be that Tempranillo Blanco is a slightly more aromatic than Biura. But they are both neutral grapes and they are both very interesting, very interesting grapes. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to be cheeky and squeeze one more in because Mahesh has actually asked me behind the scenes as well. Uh, but Tim has just alluded to it. Rishi, before you go, please, could you recommend one dish that you would pair with each of the wines? Okay. And then Tim would also like to know about a cheese with the red. OK, fantastic. So, well, if I have to go to um, to the societies talking about the time that I will be in, in my in what I have available in uh, the Balearics right now. <laughs> OK. <laughs> This well, I would rather go to a to a, a summer. We have in Spain a ensalada de verano, which is a is a salad with pasta. Okay, so tomatoes, a mayonnaise. This could be a dish for that. Of course, you know any kind of white fish. Okay, or or even a pizza, a margarita pizza. Okay, for this wine, for example, I would say. Then el pacto. This one I would rather go to having with uh, maybe um, chicken bri no, uh, pollo asado. I don't know chicken, oh, chicken. pollo asado, asado. asado. Yeah, gr grilled chicken asado, oh, yeah. right? Grilled yeah. chicken. Yeah. I had today grilled chicken, so and we drink <laughs> this wine, and I can promise they were <laughs> very well. Okay, and uh, or I would rather go talking about uh, maybe tuna. Just touch like. Shh, shh. Okay, you know, want this nice tuna, okay? We have to find it, but something like this Lovely. will work very well, okay? Or regarding cheese, I think that wine and cheese, they always pair fantastically. But uh, if I had to choose something, I will go to, uh, there is a producer in Rioja, which is Cameros. I don't know if it's available in the UK. They, they are growing and they do fantastic uh, job so they have a type of um, semi curado so half uh, cure okay style which is uh, kind of strong but it's also uh, is not too heavy okay so a style of cheese like that will work fantastically and this one I will pair with friends yeah so this Perfect. one this one I will just open and have conversation and pair with uh, actually what I'm gonna do right after this so enjoying this, this glass with my friends, with no food, just to have this wine to be the center of the, of the moment. And on that note, I must say thank you to you both. And I'm going to do exactly the same. <laughs> I'm very excited. Uh, so I'll hand over to Pierre for a, a final handover and thank you. But thanks to Mahesh behind the scenes and on behalf of me and the tastings team. Thank you, Richie. Thank you, Matt, behind the scenes as well. And thank you, Pierre. Yeah, no, thanks, Anna and, and Mahesh, um, for, for making it easy for Richie and I. And uh, Richie, thank you so much. It was like, it's just fantastic. To, uh, seeing some of the messages pop up on Zoom at the bottom, um, just about your, your passion, you know, that's, uh, and it's, it's, it's an important, um, an important driving force, isn't it, really? And uh, um, yeah, you know, you've um, you've spoke so eloquently. You've taken time out from your holiday, but I guess the um, the the carrot was that you've got these fantastic bottles now to share with your your friends, and um, you know, wishing you and the team um, a really really successful uh, vintage as well. Um, I'm sure your mind will start be moving towards harvest, which is such an important part of your of mm -hmm. your year. So salud, thank you very much and you um, much. see you soon. Good night. See you soon. Thank you very much, everyone.